All right, well, we'll go ahead and get things started. Hello, everybody. Thank you all for joining us this evening here in Spider Time on the East Coast. I'm sure people are joining us from all over the world in different time zones. So thank you for joining us um, wherever you may be today. Uh, my name is Patrick Binner. I am the Director of Residence Life and Housing, and I am joined by my colleague. Hey, y'all. My name is Jacob Lohman. Uh, he, him pronouns. Okay. So we're going to go off camera here in a second, but what we're going to be going through is all things about residence life and housing. And we're going to also walk through the application process, the roommate selection process, and some important information that you all need to know about living on campus. So you won't see us while we're talking, but we will come back during the Q&A section. And please remember to use the um, function for the questions and answers in the bottom of your screen. And we'll be tracking those as we go throughout and we'll try to answer them as we go along, but we will get back to those at the end as we go to, okay? Bear with me. All right. Okay, so as we discussed and shared, my name is Patrick Benner. I'm the Director of Residence Life and Housing and I'm joined by Jacob Lohman, who is been with our office now for two years, Jacob, is that right? Two years, Going right. starting my third. Outstanding. Um, and just for just context, um, our department came together in 2017, but I've been working at the university since 2001 in various capacities around campus. All right. So just a, some quick highlights real fast about our office and the mission of residence life and housing. We want to celebrate the individual student and we are embracing inclusion. We encourage responsible leadership and we want to promote an intellectual community. One of the biggest things that we focus on are our values throughout our programming initiatives, which are community connections, inclusivity and support. Our biggest part is our vision. So we want to support that co-curricular development of all residential students while creating that sense of belonging in the spider community. We want to ensure that the residential experience for all of our students is a place where they have space to socialize, study, sleep, and succeed as students at the University of Richmond. Some highlighted benefits of living on campus. <coughs> Excuse me. Just so everybody's aware, um, approximately 99% of all students who are in the first year class live on campus, and about 90% of all students live on campus for all four years. While we do not have a residency requirement on our campus, our students love to live on our campus and our residence halls um, are actually, I, I'll have to boast, they're really amazing. We've done a great job with our housing redevelopment plan over the last two phases and all of our first year residence halls have been um, remodeled or re renovated since 2015. So that speaks very highly of our staff and working with our architectural teams with our upkeep because it keeps our students very happy with the amenities that we're able to offer. We also have resident assistants and head residents that are work very closely and tirelessly with our office and with our team. They are amazing students on campus and you may as a student want to be a resident assistant or head resident one day, or you may have a spider or a future spider that you want to be a resident assistant or head resident. You will get a chance to meet all of those students at move in and orientation. Um, they provide amazing support and connections and provide programming opportunities for all of our students. And the ratio we have is a great one of approximately 25 first years to one RA. And we have one RA on every single floor, section, or pod within our residential community. So each of the RAs is never too far away from our future spiders, you as future spiders. We also have our dedicated live-in coordinator team, Jacob being one of them. Um, we have seven live-on staff that are all either area coordinators or coordinators in different capacities. And they are here on campus to help and assist with various things, whether it's programming, student support, after hours, emergencies, you name it. So they are incredible resources for all of our students and are there to help whenever our students are in need. Additionally, we started last year with a collaboration with our Counseling and Psychological Services um, Office, where we have enlisted two graduate assistants that collaborate with our office and with their office and also live on campus to provide that additional support for our students um, that may be in need of assistance, whether it's around mental health, well-being, they provide programming efforts, and they also work with our student staff to provide additional programming for our students. We have a faculty and residence program. We do not have faculty that live in the residence halls, but we have faculty that work within our residential facilities, and particularly, primarily only with our first-year residential communities. They will connect 
with the area coordinators of the area, as well as the RAs and head residents of that area to do programs and to, to connect with students on a different level. So you'll see those faculty members outside of the classroom connecting with you at a cookout, a barbecue, playing cornhole, or playing bingo in the middle of the night in the Laura Robbins Lounge. We also have our spider residential experience. Our focus here is on community building. You know, our RAs are on each floor, like I mentioned, and they're there to help and be mentors as a guide for all of our first year students. They offer events and programs, and they allow students to come together and learn more about one another. Through events, they explore the four different themes of our community, which are development, academic development, excuse me, community development, academic development, personal wellness and growth and inclusivity, all of which are our departmental values, as I previously mentioned. The one thing I will say to you, and you will probably hear a lot, and you'll hear again even more and more at orientation, is to get involved. The college experience is more than going to class. It's more than coming back to your residence hall. It's more than just hanging out with your students on your floor. So be open to exploring new things. Being a part of new groups and getting out there, getting out of your comfort zone is really important to embrace the entire living experience, residential experience, and spider experience at Richmond. All right, so to speak more about our first year residence halls, so we have six halls that first year students can be a part of. Uh, Dennis, Marsh, Moore, Robbins, Wood, and Lower Robbins Court are all six of those. Um, some general information, all of our residence halls are air conditioned with individual fan coil units and a fresh air system throughout each building. Um, all rooms have laminate tile or laminate vinyl flooring. Laundry is free in each community. We do have vending machines in residential areas where you can pay with cash, Apple or Google Pay, as well as uh, your spider card. Uh, we have study spaces and lounge scattered throughout all of our buildings for group or individual work or fun. Small refrigerators and microwaves are permitted in rooms, um, but please be sure to check out our website for things to bring and prohibited items. I'll send a link later on in the chat for those. Uh, and only service and assistance animals are allowed, but they must be approved before coming on campus. And that has to be done through our Office of Disability Services. Each first year hall is co-ed by floor, section, or pod, depending on the layout of each building. Uh, as far as bathrooms go, all first year bathrooms are community style shared uh, between each of the residents. We also are happy to note that there are all gender bathrooms offered in each of our first year halls. Um, depending on the floor of building, there are between two and five shower stalls and two and four stalls per community style bathroom. With these numbers, bathrooms are pretty easily shareable since every person has different schedules throughout the day. Some other amenities that are in first halls, uh, in each room, there's a bed frame, a mattress, a desk, chair, and a dresser. Each of those are per resident. Um, and if you want any dimensions or measurements, be sure to visit our website and go to the Furniture and Facilities tab, then click on the FAQ for what furniture is in for each room. Dorms Direct is, a, uh, we also offer Dorms Direct. Uh, it's a third party rental company where students can rent refrigerators, futons, TVs, safes, and loft kits. Um, another convenient amenity is that Dorms Direct staff will actually come into your room before you move in and set up the equipment just to make sure that everything is safe and stable. Patrick, would you click to the next slide, please? Um, some additional housing options. So incoming first year students are able to opt in or apply to the following housing options. Um, feel free to scan the QR code on the screen to learn more about each of them. So the first one is substance free housing. Uh, we also offer gender flexible housing and the Richmond Endeavor, which is a living learning experience uh, offered through a different office. Okay, so more specifics into the actual application process and getting camp on campus housing. So to acquire housing for the upcoming academic year, you'll need to complete a housing application. Uh, this application is available through our housing software, which is called Stares. Um, a link to Stares can be found on your admissions portal as well as our website, but feel free to scan the QR code to pull it up on your devices now. Even though I would recommend waiting to complete the application until the webinar is finished. 
Um, two noteworthy parts of this application is the housing contract that you should review and sign, and you'll have to do that to get housing on campus for the upcoming year. There's also a section called lifestyle questions where you are able to answer prompts about your personality and your preferred living conditions. Please be sure to answer these questions honestly, as you're going to use them to find other people on the roommate portal and compare your compatibility with them on paper, of course. This also leads me to the last pages on the housing application, which is the roommate selection portal. This portal is going to allow you to search for roommates and then match with those potential roommates. Once a roommate group is created and finalized within the Stardust portal, we will use those groups to make housing assignments. Um, if you do not finalize a roommate group in Stardust, we're going to assign you a random roommate, but we'll use those lifestyle questions that we mentioned earlier, which is why it's important to answer those accurately. Uh, the roommate portal is going to be open July June 11th. And then it's going to stay open until the application, the full application closes on June 30th. And then we'll talk more about, yep, here we are. So specific roommate instructions. So the application has multiple pages of instructions and tips for navigating the roommate portal. We strongly recommend you review those before beginning your roommate search process, just because they have some important information in it. The main things to note, though, is that you're going to create or join a roommate group via this portal. For us to pair you together when we make room assignments, any students who want to live together have to be in the same roommate group. We're not going to know if you don't create that roommate group and be a part of it. Please note that students may be in different roommate portals based on their program status. So if you're participating in Endeavor, you're only going to see other students who are also participating in Endeavor. Um, and then students who are opting into gender flexible housing are only going to see other students opting into gender flexible housing. And then on the next slide, uh, the roommate portal will have multiple options for you to search for other students. So I've included a screenshot on the slide here to kind of show you what it looks like. So if you know who you want to live with, you can just search for them in the application. Um, one criteria is that they're going to have to have started the application as well as checked the display and roommate search results box that's in the lifestyle questions page. Uh, like I said, currently on the screen, you'll see the option to search by their legal name. Um, you can also use the search for roommates by profile function there on the bottom right uh, to find potential roommates based on the specific lifestyle question. So if one thing's more important to you than something else. Um, and this choice also allows you to filter roommate searches to for those specific questions. And then I think it's a really nifty function called suggest roommates, which is the bottom link on the left or on the right, excuse me, where you can see a list of potential roommates ordered by compatibility. So this is also based on the lifestyle questions that we mentioned earlier. And then lastly, if someone you know has already created a roommate group and you know you want to live with them, all you have to do is hit select roommate group and then enter the group's names uh, exactly as it's written, and then it'll add you automatically to that group. And that's how you use the roommate search function. Unmute myself. So some of the things we wanna make sure that you do check out, and we were gonna add these things in the chat function um, once we come back on the full screen are the virtual tours of our residential facilities. So you will get um, housing assignments and Jake will cover those when they do come out. And so you'll be able to see the virtual tours of at least one of the residence hall rooms in each of the buildings. There's a lot of similarity between the rooms, but there's a few nuances that can vary from room to room. But we also have the floor plans as well as the dimensions of the room and measurements on our website. You can use these virtual tours they're very neat because you can do what's called as a dollhouse view and you can do measurements and see how the roommate, like the rooms can shift around and stuff like that. So it's very neat. You also get an image of what the actual furniture is that's in those residence hall buildings as well as the flooring style. Um, and there'll be some other features that are um, kind of highlighted for as the kind of additional buttons you can click on for additional information. Some of those things will be the items to bring. And some of those things will be the prohibited items. We kind of embed those in the virtual tours. So you're seeing them on different phases and different parts of what you're looking for in the rooms. We don't have all of our rooms on virtual tours. 
we have at least one room in every single residential building, which is a standard double room. So you'll be able to see what those things look like. And you'll be able to kind of have a comparison of what the, your room may look like once you do receive your housing assignments. And always we do ask you that follow us on Instagram because we do share a lot of information about upcoming information for our spiders, but also our spider families. So they understand some of the things that are going on on campus within our residential facilities, as well as things around um, upcoming breaks, um, closings, um, application processes and things like that, which is helpful information for people to understand about what you may need to do before you leave for the end of the semester, or if you're going home for fall break or any of the other breaks. So now Jacob will cover the application timeline. Yes. So uh, with the application has already opened and that was on April 17th. Um, so that is when it opens for all new and entering students. Then on June, that date is incorrect. It's actually June 11th. Um, that's a week from today. Uh, the roommate selection is open in Starres. So that uh, will open up for you automatically. So you don't have to do anything special. And then on June 30th, the housing application will close. So there won't be any more edits able to be done at that time. And then on July, July 22nd, housing assignment emails will be sent out to all students. Um, so just check your email on, the, on or before that date um, just to keep out for your housing assignments. And just important things to note about when something opens in Starvez, it's always 9 a.m. Eastern time. Mm -hmm. And when something closes in Starvez, it's always 11.59 Eastern Standard Time. All right, so I'm going to stop share so Jacob and I can start looking at things in the chat. And if you do have questions, feel free to put those in the chat and we will address them as they come up. And you're able to, there's a thumbs up feature. If there's multiples that are coming in, we'll try to get to them as we can. I see there's a question from students that I've already found my roommate through social media methods. How should I go about filling out the application? So as Jacob, go ahead and jump on that one. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, all you need to do is uh, search uh, on the roommate portal. All you have to do is just hit search roommate by name, search their name, and then you'll be able to add them to the group at that point. It's that easy. Next question is, can I have items shipped to campus ahead of time? Absolutely. Once you, you will also receive information through your, um, your banner account where you're able to know what your box number is. All of our, we, all of our stuff is mailed to one location on campus and every student is issued a box number. Um, they do allow for bulk mailing before the semester starts, but you just need to coordinate with them on that. And do we get any say in which residence hall we live in? No, we do not. <laughs> so the only thing that um, has a designated location is our Endeavor students. And those students do live within Laura Robbins Court. Are microwaves and fridges allowed? Yes, absolutely. Um, you see the things on the items to bring so you can get information about that's um, an information, but you also would want to coordinate with your roommates because they're whether or not you have a need for your own personal microwave or your own personal fridge, um, just being mindful of space as well. All right, hang on for a few more questions. A couple of them just jumped in. Jacob, do you want to take the first one about, yep, gotcha, okay. Yep, of course. 
So uh, the first question was, do I still need to find a roommate if I applied for the Endeavor program? So long, an long answer is no, you don't have to find a roommate because we'll end up automatically assigning you a roommate if you don't. But I would recommend at least searching for one just to see if you can find one. Um, but as Patrick mentioned earlier, all Endeavor students are within the same building. So you'll likely be messaging with people that could live on your hallway, but definitely will be in the same building. So next question that comes in on the lifestyle questions, there's a section where it asks for more information. What should I write in that? Whatever you feel to help describe yourself a little bit better to a potential roommate. It could be more things about your hobbies, interests, likes, dislikes, um, what you're looking for in a roommate. You can expand on some of the questions. I know because they're on a Likert scale where you may just be a little more descriptive on things. Jacob, is there anything else you want to add to that? You can also add any identities that you want to share with people, um, but keep in mind that all that's public information. So like anyone can look at that uh, if they go look on your profile. So if you're comfortable with sharing any of that information, you're more than welcome to. So yes, the next question that comes in, are all bed lengths and widths the same? Yes, um, we actually have a standard six foot eight bed length, but I also have extra ones in storage for those that are taller than six foot eights, because we do have a few seven footers on our basketball team. Um, so all you have to do is ask for those in advance. And that information is on our website, just to email our office and we will coordinate um, with our services office to get those beds in place before arrival. Well, as we have no open questions, and I know everyone values their time and their evening with everybody. So we want to thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, we look forward to welcoming you to campus. All of our move-in information is also on the website. But as Jacob um, noted earlier, we will be sending out roommate assignments um, the week of July 22nd. So be on the lookout for that. It will have an even more additional information for you about signing up for a move-in time slot and stuff around move-in and all that information. So when you see that, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to our office at Residence Life at richmond.edu, or you can email myself or Jacob, and you can see our information on our website. Okay. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight.